Hello, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today, we are recreating another mission, and that mission is Vostok 1. Uh, it's the mission that carried the first man to, uh, to space, and it was a Russian mission, which is why it's very hard to find pictures of the original rocket, because the Soviets were very secretive. But here we are launching. I have edited uh, Yuri Gagarin into the game. Uh, he shouldn't have a beard. Originally, Yuri did not have a beard. Uh, just ignore that. Uh, the facial hair um, is due to Texture Replacer. It used to be Universe Replacer, but I think they changed his name. It's just one of many mods I've installed. I think the only part adding mod I've added is KW Rocketry. The rest are just to make the game look pretty, like here. These flames are from hot rockets. Alright, we've jettisoned the boosters and the fairings, and we are beginning our gravity turn. Uh, you might notice that that capsule is tiny relative to the rocket. Uh, it, it's supposed to be about like the same diameter, but due to limited parts, again, it was very difficult for me to make this rocket. Uh, so just imagine that when we detach from this launch stage that there is a cut there and it's like completely different scale of uh, spacecraft just yeah imagine that's bigger or the booster smaller one of the two but because this mission is just a you know general going into orbit because well obviously it was a first man in space I've decided to challenge myself and try to hit the exact periaps and apolaps recorded for the Vostok 1 mission. The periaps is 169 kilometers, and I think that uh, the apolaps was 327. So I'm setting up a maneuver node to get kind of close to that number. Uh, you can't get perfectly to it, obviously, because the maneuver nodes are difficult. But, uh, I think I will be able to use the engines and get it pretty close at least. Alright, so we've decoupled from the massively oversized uh, launcher booster stage. You can see the Bostock uh, mission emblem on the side of the capsule. And we're getting ready to circularize. You might hear some noises like uh, communications, maybe a few beeps here and there. That is the chatter mod. It, it adds a bit of atmosphere. There's a couple noises that are like, uh, I forgot what their actual name is, but they're like scanning beeps uh, for satellites. I turned them off because they are very annoying. But I think it adds a bit of atmosphere to have the sound of the capsule the ventilation system. When you go out in your AVA, EVA suit, you can hear them breathing, all sorts of fun stuff. So we've reached, or run out of fuel, didn't quite reach the app laps we needed, so I used the retro boosters to kind of push me out there. And you might notice that uh, the original Vostok had a round capsule like this, but mine looks more like the Mercury capsule, and that's just, again, because of limited parts, and I find it kind of funny considering that the Mercury capsule was American, and the Americans were competing against the Soviets. Yuri Gagarin, commenting on his view of the Earth. Alright, so let's set up a deorbit burn. Oh, there you can see Eve, Duna, and a planet that looks white or yellow. And that is thanks to the Distant Object Enhancer, just another mod I have installed. Alright, uh, so add a maneuver node. And I want to land, uh, well, I'd love to land next to the Kerbal Space Center. But I'm just going to go ahead and try to land on that big continent over here. It's currently night, but I think by the time I get there, it will be day. Uh, yes, it's pretty close to sunrise there. So, uh, I bring the periaps down over the space center, but obviously because of the atmosphere, I'm not quite going to make it there. So, let's speed up and get over to the maneuver node and do this burn. Uh, you might have noticed I have Ferrum Aerospace installed as well. And that is my main concern during this deorbit. Ferrum Aerospace makes the atmosphere very thick, and because I also have uh, Deadly Reentry installed, that 
decelerates you very quickly, so it's not really the heat I'm worried about, it's more the G-forces, because G-forces can kill Kerbals very easily, and I would not like to kill Yuri. So, we speed around and get close to the atmosphere, and then we jettison this, uh... I don't know, I think, uh, on the US missions it's referred to as a service module, I think, but... Uh, I'll just call it the Retro Booster Pack or something like that. And you can see it there, falling back to Kerbin, or, well, Earth. So, approaching the atmosphere, and yes, we will be landing on the day side of the planet. That will be nice, especially for, uh, the way that this rocket lands. Uh, you might not know that Vostok 1, uh, Geary didn't actually land in the capsule. I think they didn't do it because, uh, well, one of two things. Either they didn't trust the parachutes for the capsule, and they wanted to go with a proven ejection seat, or they were just too lazy to put a big parachute on the capsule. I don't know. Wish I had very limited resources and were very secretive. It's hard to find out information. But we are re-entering. Uh, it looks like Yuri is going to be fine. And... Uh, you can see a bit of Minmus there in the back. That's, once again, thanks to Distant Object Enhancer, which uh, usually you can never find Minmus. And, well, you can absolutely never find the planets. But you can see everything now. So we've got the parachute out, and we're on our way down, and all of a sudden, Yuri jumps out. Yes. Uh, ignore the American flag on his, uh, spacesuit there. This was the closest thing I could find to what he wear wore. There was a white helmet, orange suit. Let's, uh, semi-deploy this parachute. It's not fully open. And let's descend through these nice, beautiful, volumetric clouds. Yes, much improved since the last time I used this mod. And also, there's cities during the day. Well, kind of. They're more just lines on the ground that when you get close to them turn into, like, desert. I think that's what this is. Yes, this is the desert. But, yeah, it, it, it adds a bit of atmosphere to the game. Alright, we're coming down rather slowly, well, thanks to the thick atmosphere of Fair Mirror Space. I probably could have landed with this parachute partially open, but I felt like being nice to Yuri and not smashing him into the ground. So he landed in a potato field, it's a very funny story, he had to convince the woman there that he was not an American spy. But when the Russian government picked him up, they decided not to let him fly in space again, and not to actually fly in airplanes, just to keep him safe. He flew a few times, but on one tragic day, he was flying a trainer jet, and uh, we don't know what happened, but the trainer jet went down and Yuri, unfortunately, died. So I am going to be ending with another memorial to Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. <laughs>